Welcome to online worship with Epiphany Lutheran Church on this third Sunday of Advent. My name is Philip Martin, one of the pastors here, along with Joseph Bullock. And we greet you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Some announcements for our congregation. Today is Consecration Sunday, and because of the pandemic, we cannot celebrate that as we are used to with the festival worship and a meal and lighting of some of our Christmas lights. But we do uh, have something special in today's worship to help us think about God's gifts and how we respond in faith. Members of our congregation are invited to fill out their commitment card that was mailed to them. And they can return that in person in the white box in our new commons area or drop it in the church office, or you can just mail it in. But we thank everyone for their ongoing support of Christ's ministry through this congregation. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance yet to watch the daily Advent devotions that members of this congregation have put together called Come Lord Jesus. They air each day at 9 o'clock on Facebook and our YouTube channel, and they're available after they, they, are, they are posted. Um, I have been touched, and I have been moved, and I'm grateful for the faith that people in this congregation have shared so honestly and openly, and it has been a blessing to see your faces to hear your voices about how God's grace is present for you in Advent and Christmas. So thank you to those who are participating, and I do really encourage you to, to, to tune in uh, each day to watch those. They just are a, are a true delight and a joy. Uh, our live nativity is going to happen today at 5 p.m., as, as long as weather permits, which we think it will. People will remain in their cars in the parking lot, tune in to 89.3 FM, and the whole service we think will last about 30 minutes. Uh, there will be some Christmas carol singing, again, from inside everyone's car. Uh, there will be a book reading. We will offer a gift to every child, uh, fourth grade and younger, all the way down to birth. They will receive something uh, today that is Christmas-related. <clears throat> and then, of course, uh, the big... Uh, scene of Jesus' birth will be played out by members of the congregation. So we're excited about that and um, glad to have that happen today at 5 p.m. And lastly, we'd like to thank those in our congregation who participated in our giving tree. We far exceeded our goal of providing 250 $25 gift cards to Walmart to students at Ridge Elementary School, one of our local elementary schools. That will bring a lot of joy to those families uh, at this Christmas season. And as you sing the hymns this morning, listen to our mystery hymn word, which is a word that means near, especially in terms of time. Near, especially in terms of time. That's our mystery hymn word. If you know it, type it in the comments below. And now we have the Baker family lighting the third candle on our Advent wreath. Hi, we are the Baker family. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Josh. And Jeff is our cameraman. This is the third Sunday of Advent, and our reading comes from Isaiah, the 60th chapter. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Now nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Thanks, Josh. And for our show and tell, we have two ornaments. Um, this first one is one we've had for a long, long time, long before Josh was born, and it shows um, Joseph, Mary, and the baby Jesus with the angel in the background. And this always goes at the very top of our Christmas tree. And the other one is the baby Jesus in the manger. And Josh made this when he was really small. Do you remember making this? Yeah. Yeah. So this one always goes on the mantle right at the start of Advent. And this is very special because we've had this since he was really little. So these are two things that mean a lot to us. And now we're going to join in prayer. Ready? Dear God, thank you for sending your light into the world for us. Please walk with us through this season of Advent and help us to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to those we meet. Amen. Amen. We continue with the confession and forgiveness. 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, Hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's presence and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, and also with you. With you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you.
Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, friends, and welcome to our children's sermon time. And as we get together now, I'd invite you to come close to the screen if you like, and we will sing our children's sermon song together. It's called, He Came Down. And today we're remembering that Jesus came down to bring us joy. So I'll sing one time through, and then I hope you'll join me. He came down that we may have joy. He came down that we may have joy. He came down that we may have joy. Hallelujah forevermore. He came down that we may have joy. He came down that we may have joy. He came down that we may have joy. Hallelujah forevermore. We have come to a season in the year of gifts. People will be giving gifts and getting gifts here in these coming weeks. And I wonder if you've begun to think about that. Have you thought about things that you might like to receive as a gift? Have you given your family ideas for things to give you? You can also make a list of things that you'd like to get or make for other people. What would you like to make for mom or dad or for family or friends? It's a wonderful time to give gifts and to think about things that people might like to have. Do you know what God wants to give you? God wants to give you the gift of joy. Joy is a good feeling to know that you are cared for, that you are loved, and you are valued. God gives us the gift of joy when he gives us the gift of Jesus. A couple weeks ago, I was with our youth group, and we made something called gratitude jars. This is just a jar. It can be you could make it as a gift, really, to give to somebody else. But we made these jars and we wrote down things, gifts that God had given us, blessings. Oh, I love the beautiful trees outside. I love the summertime. I love ice cream. I love uh, my grandmother. I love um, singing. Just writing down all the things that we are thankful for. And the day that we made these, it was uh, God was giving us the gift of a huge windstorm. And so we were outside and we were trying to write these things down and put them in the jar. And the wind was blowing everywhere and blowing all these pieces of paper all over the yard at church into the neighborhood. We were running as fast as we could and trying to pick up as many of them as we could. And I don't think we got them all. And that's kind of like... God's blessings to us. There are too many to even name, too many to even count. Um, but the greatest gift that he wants to give us is the gift of joy, to know that Jesus loves us. And joy and giving thanks go together. 
The more we give thanks to God, the more joy we will feel. The more joy we feel, the more we know that we have so many things to give thanks for. So I hope that today you might, uh, with your family, think about the specific things that you're giving thanks for and receive that gift of joy because that's what God really wants for you this Christmas and all the time. So bless you as you give thanks and as you rejoice together. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for looking at me and feeling joy, for loving me and my family and our church and your whole world. Help us to count our blessings, to give thanks for what you've given us, and to share what we have so that many people will know your joy. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. God bless you. One night this past week, my family was seated at our kitchen table for our Advent devotions, which we typically do right as everyone finishes eating. We prefer to have the table cleared before we do them, but on this particular night, we were just in a rush, so we shoved the dishes to the middle of the table and made do. There are different duties all associated with our devotional routine. In our kitchen window, we have our Advent log, which contains one candle for each day of Advent. We also have an Advent calendar on the pantry door and some devotional readings that I've worked up over the years. Everyone has multiple roles to play. Melinda even reads from a storybook. And no matter how many times we talk about the routine or how well organized we think we are, there's always some fuss and debate about who gets to do what each night. On this particular evening, as he watched the rest of us try to figure out what was going to happen in what order, the four-year-old announced all on his own that he wanted to lead us in a prayer. It kind of caught us off guard, and even though our routine was already a little too elaborate, you might say, we couldn't turn down his request. And so we bowed our heads and let him offer a prayer. There was no hesitation on his part. Dear God, he said, and then he clearly waited for us to repeat, Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving Bigger Bear, which is 
his number one stuffed animal. Thank you for loving Bigger Bear. Thank you for loving our food. Thank you for loving our food. Thank you for loving our vegetables. Thank you for loving our vegetables. Thank you for loving an apple. Thank you for loving an apple. And at this point, I couldn't resist opening my eyes just a little bit. And I saw him scanning the room, looking for the next thing he could plug into his prayer formula. The girls were starting to get the giggles, and I wasn't sure how long this was going to go on, considering we have a very cluttered kitchen right now. He had plenty of things to choose from. But right at that moment, he said, Amen, with a big smile on his face. In his final words to the Thessalonians, Paul says to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. There we were in our kitchen doing all three, and our four-year-old was leading the way. In the Thessalonians' case, Paul is not discussing family devotions or rituals, really, but the situation they are dealing with is not all that different from ours on this third Sunday of Advent. The Thessalonians are eagerly waiting the arrival of Jesus. They are taking serious Jesus' own promise that he would return at any moment and usher in his reign of peace and justice and love. We get the sense from reading the letter that they are starting to get a little impatient and that impatience is leading to some anxiety and even some fear. I think the Thessalonian congregation sounds a little bit like a popular Christmas song by the chipmunks, but reworked. Our Lord Jesus, time is near, time of peace, time of cheer. We've got faith, but we can't last. Hurry, Jesus, hurry fast. And then in his characteristic pastoral tone, Paul assures them that anxiety and fear are not in order. Even in this time of waiting, they can rejoice always. They can pray constantly and they can look around the room wherever they are and start plugging things in, they see and notice into a prayer of thanksgiving. There are several times where prepositions become very important in the language of our faith, and I find that this is one of them. Paul does not say to the Thessalonians, give thanks for all circumstances, but to give thanks in all circumstances. And so even as they pray for Jesus to hurry, even as they confess some frustration with how long the waiting is turning out to be, they can still be thankful. That is, they don't need to feel thankful for Jesus' delay, but it's absolutely appropriate to be thankful while Jesus is delayed. We find that this expands to all kinds of situations of faith and life. I've had a conversation this week with a woman in our congregation whose father just died. She told me how she has feelings of sadness because, after all, he was her dad and she loved him, but at the same time expressed to me how thankful she feels nonetheless. Thankful his death was peaceful. Thankful all siblings had time to gather and spend time with him. Thankful the nursing facility relaxed COVID restrictions just so they could say goodbye to him. She's not thankful for his death, but she's thankful in the circumstances. I spoke recently with someone else whose child had received a cancer diagnosis. Those are words you never want to hear about yourself or a loved one. You rarely, if ever, give thanks for cancer, but at the same time, There was clear thankfulness in this case that it had been caught far earlier than it should have. There's thankfulness for the support from so many friends and caregivers, thankfulness 
for the top-notch medical care in this community. I don't think I need to belabor the point, and Paul doesn't either. These three little commands at the end of his letter are brief and to the point. Through joyfulness, fervent prayer, and a spirit of thankfulness, we will have all we need to be blameless and sound at the coming of Jesus. To be blameless and sound is to be ready, to be whole. And all three of these things, thanksgiving, prayer, and joy, have a way of doing that to our souls. God, the one who calls us, is faithful, Paul reminds us, and will provide us the ability to sit around the table, virtually if we have to, and share these things together. Of those three, The one we might need to hear most in these days is the command to rejoice always. For obvious reasons, joy goes a long way during stressful times like these. Traditionally, the third Sunday of Advent is called Gaudete Sunday, taken from the Latin word for joy. The scripture readings appointed for this Sunday typically focus on joy if they don't mention joy directly. We certainly hear them today. In some traditions, the Advent candle is pink, a color that symbolizes joyfulness and gladness, which reminds us that ultimately we are anticipating joy in Jesus. That Latin word, gaudete, is also where we get the word gaudy, which is a word that comes to mind with pink. Gaudy also makes me think of what has become many people's favorite way to mark this time of year, the tacky Christmas sweater or gaudy Christmas sweater. Things that are gaudy often bring joy. They're flashy and fun. They don't hold back and aren't subdued by social convention or feelings of embarrassment. They're kind of bold in the midst of the whites and golds of Christmas time that are more stately. The third Sunday of Advent tells us our faith can wear a gaudy Christmas sweater, especially in the midst of a world that is dark and hurting. It's a garland instead of ashes, a mantle of praise rather than a faint spirit, as the prophet Isaiah says. But we know the joy that Christ brings is not a shallow or surface happiness. It isn't a fake smile plastered over a hurting heart. It's an abiding sense that knows God plays the long game, as theologian Walter Brueggemann says. It's a deep, glad confidence, he says, that God's goodwill for the world will outrun all of our troubles and tribulations. This, you see, is a joy rooted in the cross and shining with the light of Easter morning. It has already looked death head on and let death do its worst, and still it is not conquered. Nothing can now take that reality away. The truly amazing thing about this joy that Christ brings us is that it isn't just intended for us and for our salvation. It's a joy that is reflected in the transformation of the world around us. The visible joy in our faith is seen out there. The brokenhearted find themselves bound up in hope. The captives are set free. Prisoners to sin and grief and poverty are released. The ruins of human communities are rebuilt and restored. Goodness and mercy flow through us again, like in the watercourses of the Negev, a desert wilderness in southern Israel after a storm. They blossom and grow in a riot of color, even though the surrounding hills and rocks in their desolation suggest they are out of place. A gaudy sweater looks out of place. And the joy of Christ sets us apart, even as the world seems fearful. Jesus, in all his goodness, comes to us. In fact, John says he is standing among us now, May we be sound and blameless, ready and whole. It's a joyful thing. 
Next thing you know, this joy spills over from our personal gaudiness to clothe all of creation. It spills over in your generosity through the giving tree and Thanksgiving baskets to communities in our area this year. It flows over in your commitments on this Consecration Sunday to carry this congregation to an, into another year, even if a pandemic is ongoing. The writer of the psalm would call this shouldering the sheaves. John the Baptist would call this testifying to the light, the light that ends the darkness. Paul would call it rejoicing always, giving thanks in all circumstances. And Jasper, my son, would say, thank you, God, for loving me and for loving that over there and that over there and that and that and that. Take your pick. They're all the same. They're all saying the Lord is near. The one who fills us with joy, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. I invite you now to watch the video prepared by our stewardship team for today's Consecration Sunday. Hear the thankfulness and the joy that members of our congregation have as they describe how God has sustained them even in these trying times. And join me in praising a God who is more faithful than we ever imagined, a God who plays the long game. He has done great things for us. We are joyful indeed. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Philip Martin, one of the pastors at Epiphany Lutheran Church and the head of staff here. The year 2020 has been one full of challenges both for our congregation and for the world. But we take to heart the scripture command that we rejoice always pray without ceasing, and to give thanks in all circumstances. We have been amazed at the many different ways we've been able to give thanks for God's guidance this year, and as we think of moving into the next year and responding in faith. I invite you to listen to some of the words of members of this congregation as they reflect on how they've been able to give thanks in all circumstances this year and into the future. With the pandemic, it's just been really hard for us to you know, gather a church and it's been a very fearful time for us. And it's been a blessing that we can gather online through our morning and evening prayers. That's really what sustained us through the early days of the pandemic. And to, to come together and to know that you know, we're all still a community, though we can't be together. Um, the outreach ministry has been something I've, I've been a part of, and these were things we had talked about well before the pandemic even came to life, was how can we uh, get our word out to the people, um, not just within our four walls, but also to those who stay at home, to those who are from outside of our community, how do we bring new people in and show them what we're about. But now that we've had this pandemic, it's become even more important because it's delivered a message of hope and healing and comfort uh, to our community. Uh, church community and to the community at large, those who are tuning in. Well, this is the Deal family. I'm Alicia Deal. This is Andrea. Uh, and, and I'm Steve Deal. I, um, we have two more, Elizabeth and Zachary, that are not here today with us, but we've definitely seen God sustain our family and Epiphany throughout this difficult and interesting year. Um, we've been thankful for the extra time we've had with family that, you know, sometimes you need something to change to kind of bring those things about. You know, we've seen our family continue to grow and be sustained by just, you know, people reaching out, um, just different types of ministry and church that have kept us connected. Um, I'm very thankful for how much the online service has matured and how that's come, uh, been a great part of our life to continue adding that comfort. I do miss some of the Sunday school pieces and I'm so happy that we're doing these boxes and looking forward now for the Advent boxes so we can do things with our family and continue to feel that connection with members of Epiphany. Uh, 
um, God has sustained me this year by just, for me personally, just knowing that He's always, always around, and that even if you can't see Him, or even if like you feel like you're alone, you're not. You're you always have Him by your side. I'm part of um, the youth group, and so that's probably like the biggest part for me, because like every other Sunday, probably we would just get together and we just hang out and talk talk about how our weeks are going and that's always been really good for me and we have synod events for high schoolers at least we go to winter cell or we go to kairos and those two have just been phenomenal they're a big group of lutherans just getting together and just getting to know each other and just learn about our faith and grow in our faith and just it's really good it's really good experience well, the ways God has uh, touched me during this time has I've been uh, giving prayers and, and people have helped me along the way. And the, the ministries that have helped me so much have been my circle. They've been wonderful. We Zoom every week and then we have our meeting once a month. Um, and they've shown so much support for me and and they care for everybody. Um, Peggy Roberts is one of our circle members and she had a stroke and they've reached out to her and to other people. To me, when I had my uh, pacemaker last year, they've, they've supported me in every way. The ministries here have been so good. Um, the, the acts and food basket and all of these things have just done so much to encourage me to encourage others and um, they've, they've just been a blessing. Paul tells us in scripture that we should be faithful whether the times are favorable or unfavorable and no matter what the times we live in we are called uh, to give our witness to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we could probably say that 2020 is one of the more unfavorable times that we have ever been alive for. And yet, as we heard in our video today, there are so many ways that Epiphany Lutheran Church, through God's grace, is meeting the needs of people in our community um, and calling us forth to service, especially in these times. So we want to thank God for the way He has been faithful to us in unprecedented ways and for the way that he will continue to provide for us, nourish us, and lead us into this coming year. And so we give God thanks for you, for the blessings that you have been given, and for the work that God calls us to together. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God's favor be upon you and lead you in peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are God's people through our baptism into Christ and living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We give you thanks for the gift of your Spirit that fills us, energizes us, and inspires us to love you by reaching out to the world in service, crying out in the wilderness with the good news of your coming and making a straight highway for your gospel. Prepare our hearts for your arrival by healing divisions in our lives and in your church and continue to bless us to be a blessing. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. For all the gifts of the natural world, light and heat and health from the sun, good things to eat from farms and orchards and the oceans, for builders and architects and city planners and all who work to build order and efficiency in our lives, bring peace and quiet to our stress through the beauty of your creation. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Inspire us to rejoice, to pray, and to give thanks without stopping. Cultivate in us a gratitude that heals grief. Accompany the citizens of Ethiopia, the nations of the Middle East, and refugees and all people fleeing violence. Guide every nation's leaders as they face conflict and crisis and deliver relief to all who cry out for help until the day that we are all gathered into your arms. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. For healing and wholeness to those who long for justice freedom and relief. Sustain those who are suffering in their time of need and be with all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Jeff, Nancy, Carol, Jenica, Megan, Claire, Maggie at the loss of our sister Brittany, and all those that we lift to you. Keep them in your care. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We give thanks for all those people and institutions that are ready to help in times of need. Bless the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and give courage to emergency response teams, police officers, nurses, doctors, surgeons, chaplains, scientists, counselors, teachers, and all who work for the sake of others. Guide our congregation, pastors and staff, and every congregation of your people, that we might prepare a way for your coming with a clear, bold, and faithful witness. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Faithful God, Keep those who have gone before us in the peace you have prepared for all creation and fill us with joy in the promise that we will all be reunited at your table and taste the perfection that you prepare for us. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Remember us in your kingdom, O Lord, and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
The creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love. The Holy Spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord.